How to Sew the Christmas Church. This is part of a matching set with the Christmas Village, which is a kit sold separately. Sew your own charming Christmas church, complete with the tower for a classic Christmas decoration. Cutting out. Take the fabric panel and you can see that all the pieces are printed on it with the labels above them. There's outers and lining for every piece, both for the church and the tower. There's a label that you can personalise it with. And also a gift tag and some applique pieces if you want to use them too. Cut out all the pieces and pin the label that's printed above each piece onto the top of each piece so you know which are the linings and which are the outers. Those are all the pieces for the church and here are all the pieces for the church tower. Adding the wadding. Place the wadding with the glue side up and then place all the lining pieces for the church and the tower on top and press into place. Once that's done, cut around the outer edge of all of them so the wadding is level with the lining. If you're using non-fusible wadding, then just tack them into the place. Do the linings for the church tower and the linings for the church at the same time. Start by making the church. Let's make the pieces. Take the church left side outer and if you want to leave the door open so that the light can shine through, turn it over to the wrong side and draw around the edge of the door using a pen. This is just so that you can see it more easily when you're stitching. It's easy to see from the wrong side so just draw around this just to make it simpler. Now place this right sides together with the church left side lining, remove the label and match up all the raw edges all the way around and pin the two pieces together. The wadding will be beneath them. Pin together all the way around If you want to leave the door in place, then just ignore the next section about stitching around the door. It's entirely up to you. Now you need to leave a turning gap so that you can turn these two pieces right sides out. An inch and a half gap is just about right. So if you measure and mark with pins, use vertical pins, measure an inch and a half in the centre of one side and then you'll remember to stop and start stitching, leaving this turning gap unstitched. So start stitching one side of the turning gap, stitch all the way around the edge. When you get to the door, sew around the drawn line and then go along the bottom and back up to the turning gap and stop. Once this is done, you now need to reduce some of the bulk in the corner. So snip off the corner and then trim the seam allowance either side of it so there's less fabric in the corner when you turn it right sides out. You don't need to trim the seam allowance all the way along, just at the corners. And take care when you're doing this not to cut through the stitching, but just cut close to it. But the more bulk that you can reduce, the neater the pieces will be when you turn the right sides out. If you're cutting out the door section, cut it out about an eighth of an inch outside of the stitching. This is just enough so that the sewing doesn't come along undone, but it just helps the door to have a neater edge when you turn it right sides out. So you won't need this door piece now. Clip off the corners and trim the seam allowance. Now you need to make some little snips into the curved section of the door, not into the stitches, but just up to them. This will help it to turn right sides out better. And you can see I've folded the seam allowances over here to help it turn right sides out better. Now, through the turning gap, push your fingers inside and turn the whole of this piece 
right sides out. The turning gap is big enough to be able to do this, but just ease it through gently until the whole thing is right sides out. It'll take a little bit of time, particularly with this door section piece, because you've got like little legs out either side of the door that just need turning right sides out. Keep the label for now, because you'll need to pin that back on afterwards, because when you've made all the pieces, it helps to remind you which piece is which. So once it's turned right sides out, make to make sure all the corners and points are right on the edges, use something like a blunt stick or a turning tool to just push out all those corners. And then on the turning gap, fold the edges to the inside. And you now need to slip stitch this close by hand. So use a matching thread and Pull the, the needle and thread at one end of the turning gap. Work a few stitches on top of each other. And then just slip stitch it closed by working into the, fab, the fold of the fabric on one side of the turning gap and then stitching over to the fold of the fabric on the other side of the turning gap. Make your stitches quite small so that they can't be seen. But this is just to hold the turning gap closed when you assemble. When you've finished stitching, work a few small over sewing stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread and then you can cut it off. And then snip off the starting bit of thread for a neat finish. So that's that piece finished with the door open. Pin the label back on and then you'll remember which piece is which, which you'll need to know when you're assembling it. Repeat this to make the left side outer, the right side outer, the front outer, the back. You've got two roof pieces, so they're all lined and turned right sides out, and the base outer too. Cutting out the windows. Decide which windows you want to cut out. I stitched around all of these windows, stitch around the inner of the window frame and then round the out of the window frame. The stitching lines are quite close together but it helps to secure the pieces. So you can see here the two rows of stitches that go through the outer and the inner. Now I decided to just cut out the two windows either side leaving the centre one uncut but you can cut out all three but the stitching helps to stabilise the windows. Now to cut out the windows start in the centre and cut out the window all the way around, very close to the stitching. About two, one or two fabric threads away from the stitching is about right. The aim is to cut out the window close to the stitching, but make sure you don't actually cut through the stitches themselves. But the two layers will help to, the two rows of stitching will help to stabilise it. So once you've cut out the whole window, you'll then need to trim it a little bit. So I've cut out both windows here. If you pull the edges of the fabric a little bit, just inside the stitching, then you can just trim off any loose threads or wadding. If you cut from the outer and also cut from the lining, you'll have a nice neat finish. So you can see when you pull it, just pull it gently because you don't want to disturb the stitching, but this just helps to remove any loose fraying threads, threads for later on. So that's the front outer windows done and I also cut the two outer windows on the back outer. You can add other quilting details now if you want. I stitched across um, the lines of the bricks and also some lines across the roofs. This helps to make them more stable and gives a little extra detail as well. And I also stitched along the outer lines of the church base. Assembling the walls. Take the church front and the church right side and place them lining sides facing and then clip them together. Make sure the base edges, so the bottom edges line up and then the top edges also. You can see those corner point matches. If you've got clips, it's easier to clip them together. 
Now start by attaching your thread in the bottom right hand corner by pulling the needle through a little bit through from the front. Leave a tail which you'll trim off later, it just helps to keep the thread secure and work a few stitches on top of each other just so that you secure the end of the thread. Now to stitch the two pieces together you're going to be working into the outer fabrics only not the lining fabrics as it helps them to fold better at the corners. So work across making a straight stitch from one piece to the other just to secure the corner. To sew them together we're going to use a slip stitch, it's also called a ladder stitch. To do that work a long stitch just through the outer near the seam on one side and then working straight across work another long stitch through the outer near the seam on the other side. So you can see that left between the stitches form horizontal stitches like the rungs of a ladder. So work another longer stitch through the outer on one side and then across to make a stitch on the other side. You can see from here about the length of the stitches you need to create. They're reasonably close together but not totally really really tiny. So when you've worked about a third about sort of five or six stitches along you then need to pull the thread so that you close the stitches. If you work the whole length, sometimes the thread can break. So about a third to halfway along, pull the thread very gently so it doesn't break. And you can see that the rungs of the ladder close up and the two sides are joined and you can't even see the stitches. And when you've pulled up one part, carry on stitching all the way along. You can clip it back into place. It just helps to hold it still, otherwise you'll find one piece might shift a little bit. So again, working from one side, go into the outer in the fold of the fabric near the seam and make a stitch through and then come straight across to leave these horizontal rungs between them. Continue working all the way up in the same way. Try and keep the spacing of your stitches even. It just helps when you pull up the stitches that it will close together better. But as you can see, when you pull the stitches, they're hidden anyway. Use a matching thread, a thread that matches the outers, as that will help to keep them invisible too. When you get to the top, lay it out flat again. Pull up the thread gently to close the stitches and that's two pieces joined together. It's important that you secure the thread at the top so that they don't come undone, undone. So again, work a few small stitches, one on top of the other, that just secures it. And rather than cutting the end off there at the top, thread the needle through a little way, because having that extra end inside means it won't come undone. And then you can trim off the starting thread too. Now in the same way, you need to join the next piece for the walls. So take the back, church back, and join that to the other side of the church right side. Again, always start by clipping the pieces together at the base and at the top edge and then stitch together in exactly the same way. Once that's done, you can now join the church left side in place. Again, always making sure you sew through the outer fabrics and not the lining fabrics. Now you've sewn all four pieces together, you can join them all together to make the whole complete wall section. So start by clipping them. If you don't have clips, you can use pins, it's just clips is a bit easier because you're going through quite a lot of layers and stitch together. Now the wall sections of the church are finished and you are ready to start adding the base. Attaching the base. Take the base piece and place the church base and the church front together with the lining sides facing so that the bottom edge of the church front and the top edge of the church base meet up and the corners are level. Pin together in each corner and then pin together across the centre. By placing a few pins or clips along the edge it just helps to keep it even and stops it shifting. Now sew together in the same way as you joined all the walls together with your slip or ladder stitch. 
all the way across. That's one side joined. Then turn it around. You don't need to unthread your needle. You can keep this in. It just helps if you clip and sew one side and then clip and sew the next. But you don't need to start and finish your thread. Once you've sewn that side, sew all the way around the other side. Remembering to clip as you go. And then finally, clip across the other side. Now, if you've left the door open, you will need to sew to one side of the door and then sew not across the centre, but sew from the other side of the door to the corner. Sewing the door frame to the base like this also helps to keep that doorway nice and even and structured. Now your base is finished and you're ready for the next stage. Adding the roof. Take the two roof pieces and place them lining sides facing with the top edges matching. You can see which are the top edges because they've got the snow on them. Now clip them together in the same way as you did with the walls. Clip them together either end and then clip them into place a few times across the centre, making sure that the top seamed edges are matching up. Now you need to sew the roof together using the slip or ladder stitch in exactly the same way you did with the walls. So start by securing your thread in the top round hand corner of the roof piece that you've got on front, leaving a short end that you'll clip off later. Work a few over sewing stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread. Then stitch into the roof on the other side, again, always through the lining fabrics, the outer fabrics only, not the lining. Once you've stitched it together all the way along, give it a press because that will just help to even it out and remove any creases. Now take the assembled walls that you did earlier and place the roof on top. The top pointed end of the gable goes right in to the roof seam. So clip that into place and then clip it into place at the bottom. You'll see that the edge of the roof overhangs. It's longer than the actual end of the gable. That's so that you have an overhang on the church roof, but that's as it should be. So clip it in together down both sides. Now I find it easier to clip one side, stitch up to that pointed gable end, then clip and stitch the other side and do it in two motions. When you've stitched one side on, do the other side in the same way. So start by clipping the pointed end so it matches up with the centre seam that joins the two roofs together and then clip it down at the bottom. Again, you'll see there's an overhang. So stitch it together at one side, then clip and stitch the gable ends in place down the other side. Make sure that the seams match up exactly because, again, you'll only be stitching through the outer fabrics, not the lining fabrics. Once you've stitched those gable ends into place, you can now stitch the inside of the roof to the front and back. Now, the roofs will overhang the front by three quarters of an inch. It may be a little bit less or more depending on how you've sewn it, but it will be about three quarters of an inch. So just measure that. Now, if you measure three, the same measurement, just check at either end to make sure it's the same. Then measure and mark this point a couple of times along the roof. It just helps to keep the roof straight and even when you're sewing it in place in a moment. So just measure and mark those points. I've just done it in a couple of places, sort of evenly spaced along. You'll be pinning into the lining side of the roof. Now take the outer wall and line that this top seam up with the lining of the roof where you put the pin and pin all of those layers together and then do the same there so now the roof overhangs the front of the church nice and leave evenly so you now need to stitch this into place you stitch this in the same way as you stitch the walls together using a slip stitch but this time it can be a little bit longer 
because it's a flat seam, it's underneath and you won't see it. The only thing you need to make sure is you work into the top of the walls of the roof and only the outer and that you stitch then into the lining and not into the roof. So check every now and then just to make sure that you haven't accidentally stitched into the roof. If you have, just undo it and re-thread your needle. But you can see I'm using much longer slip stitches here because this is really just to attach it. It's not a seam that you've got on the side walls, so it doesn't need to be as closely worked. So once you stitch one side into place, stitch the other side into place. And now your roof is neatly attached. To add some structure, because the church is quite long, it's best to press these seams. So lay the seam so it's flat and then just press it. This will give some structure because it makes the seams lay right on the edges after you've stitched them. So if you press all of the seams, so all the seams all the way around the edge of the base. And then also the top seam. This extra bit of heat will just make the seams lay on the edges. So do all of the seams all the way round and then your church section is finished. Now we can make the church tower. Let's start by making the pieces. These are made in exactly the same way as you did when making the church by sewing the outers and the linings right sides facing and also the base piece and the four roof pieces. There are four of these because you've got a pointed roof section to the church tower. I've left the door open for this so the light can shine through it. Now if you want to add windows you can choose which windows you want. I've just done the back top windows of the back outer and the front outer so the light shines through them but I've sewn around all of the other windows too to give some structure. Assembling the church tower. So the church tower front church tower back, church tower right side out and church tower left side together in the same way as you did for the church, placing them in order so that you have the front, the right side, the back and the left side. Slip stitch or ladder stitch them together down the edges as before, only working through the outer fabrics and not through the lining fabrics. Although I'm showing you clipping it together all in one go, just so you can see how it's assembled, Obviously, clip and stitch one side at a time because it's a lot easier to do that. Remembering to pull to tighten the stitches after every five or six stitches. So you're creating a four-sided piece. Once that's done and you've got your whole church tower joined together, you can sew the base on. The base is sewn to the bottom of the town exactly the same way as you sewed the base to the church. Remember to leave the door section unstitched if you've cut that out. And this will also help to keep the door, the structure of the bottom of the door because the little legs either side of the door are quite narrow, but this keeps it nice and stable. So sew it together all the way round And then you've got the base section of the tower all ready for adding the roof. Adding the roof. There are four roof pieces for the church tower. You can see I've worked some quilting stitches along these just to get, give them some structure and detail. They're all exactly the same. So take two of them, doesn't matter which two, and place them lining sides facing. Clip them together at the top and at the bottom, making sure the bottom and top edges match, and slip stitch them together in a pair. Take the other two and clip them together at the top, and then at the bottom, and slip stitch them together. Just readjust to make sure that they fit exactly. Once you have them sewn together in pairs, place those two pairs lining sides facing, and clip them together at the bottom and at the top and sew together up that side again using your slip stitch, ladder stitch as you did before and then sew all the way down the other side. This makes the whole roof, which is a shape, a conical shape almost. Now take the church tower. The roof on the church tower doesn't overhang it, it just sits exactly on top. So you need to sew this in place by slip stitching the same way as you did with the walls but it's just easier if you attach the thread to the top of the tower first and then once it's 
securely anchored in place, it's easier to then stitch the tower on. So because these pieces are all backed by wadding, they're very flexible and easy to bend, which makes sewing the roof on quite easy. So match the right hand corners, again working into the outer fabric of the roof and the outer fabric of the top of the tower. And work your same slip stitch or ladder stitch all the way along the side, exactly in the same way that we've done before, close to the seam and making sure that you've got those straight stitches that go between one piece and another. You can see with this, when I joined the roof to the walls, I actually used a double thread, meaning I had two lengths of thread in my needle. I just found it a little bit stronger when I was pulling it because this is a little bit more fiddly, but you can use one or two lengths. Stitch it together all the way around the top until the roof is finished and your church tower is complete. Joining the church tower to the church. Place the church tower on the right hand side of the church so it's positioned centrally on the right hand side and the base of the church tower and the church match up and then pin it into place all the way around just to hold it. Now sew the tower to the church in exactly the same way as you joined the walls. I started at the base just because you wouldn't see the stitches as much for the start and the finish. So start off by securing your thread by working a few small over sewing stitches on top of each other. And then slip stitch the tower to the church all the way round. Use small stitches and only work into the outer fabrics. If you work them fairly close together, just the same as when you stitched all the walls and the roofs together, you'll find that it's just a bit more secure so that the tower is firmly fixed to the church. But make sure you only work into the outer fabrics. Because otherwise, if you work into the linings as well, it can pull it slightly out of shape. So remove the pins you go, stitch across the base, up the other side, round the edge of the church and down the other side until the tower is firmly fixed to the base. You can stitch round it twice if you want to make it extra secure, if you're not sure if you've put your stitches close together enough. But I just work round once. Now your church is ready for you to pop your tea lights inside or you can just use it as a decoration. I put one in the tower and then I put two inside the church. And this is what it looks like when it's all lit up and at night it really glows. <laughs>